This is O'Reilly Media. We're here at Oracle's Open World, and we're talking to David Blevins. David, you have some news about the Tom EE project. Could you, could you tell us about it? Yeah, uh, we're really excited to announce that uh, we completed past the Java EE6 web profile TCK and uh, are getting our certification from Oracle this week here at Java 1. Okay, so just some quick background. What is the project? Um, well, so Tommy is, is a Java EE project, and it incorporates uh, all of the other sort of Java EE related projects that Apache has and ties them together in a different way than I think has been done at Apache and elsewhere, I guess. Um, it, it's not trying to create a really complicated architecture and restrict people to a specific style of developing apps. It's really all about taking real plain Tomcat and filling in the gaps between that and the web profile, which is actually very small, and doing it in a way that doesn't remove Tomcat's identity and also allows these other projects like MyFaces and Open Web Beans to be there and participate, but also they don't lose their identity. So it's not about conforming these projects to a unified vision of uh, architecture. It's about getting out of their way and putting them all together, certifying that, and coming up with something that's really light and simple that those projects enjoy and will recommend using. And uh, so anybody who sort of has their own custom-built Tomcat stack, they always kind of say, I don't like Java EE because it's so complicated. I just like Tomcat. And then if you listen, there's a little quiet dot, dot, dot afterwards where they say, I like Tomcat and my faces and CXF and ActiveMQ. And they keep adding and adding and adding till the point where they've pretty much rebuilt their own Java EE implementation, but they don't choose to think of it that way. And with Tommy, we're trying to prove that that concept is valid and can be certified, that you don't have to choose between uh, Java E and simplicity, that the two can live together at the same time on something that lives and breathes and looks like Tomcat and is Tomcat. We really just take a zip file from Tomcat, download it straight from the website, and unpack it, add some libraries, zip it back up. We certify that, and we call it Tommy. So it's really quite, I mean, anybody's got like a, a sort of a custom-built Tomcat stack. Those things are waiting to retire. I have one. Yeah. So when you start out, it's very simple, very simple. But then you get to the point where you're like, I need a, a JTA transaction provider. Sure. And, and you, just, you just, if you start to do it yourself, and you start to essentially reinvent wheels. Now, I want to be careful because I, I don't think it's wrong to choose JBoss or it's wrong to choose no, no, no. Geronimo. I, I think that those, we're trying to fill a need that hasn't been met. Okay. They're filling a need that, they're obviously filling a need, they're important. We don't want fewer implementations in the market, we want more. We've been losing them over the few years and we're just trying to add some more options in an area that we don't think is being catered to. And that's you know sort of the Tomcat focused people who just sort of use that as their minimum and to get up a little bit above that without going too far. So let me just try to set it up a little bit. If you look at the past few years, Java has had some lean years in terms of how people appreciate it. Um, sure. If you look at some like Rails, like DHH, uh, use Java as a boogeyman. And sure. And if if you look at Java, a lot of people have assumed. The Java means enterprisey, but some people have been using Java in a lightweight way with stuff like Jetty and and stuff like Tomcat. Right. Even running things like Rails apps on Tomcat and Jetty. Yeah. One thing's that uh, people like Bob McWhorter at Red Hat, they've been trying to bring Rails to the JVM. Now, one question I have is, if I'm running something like Rails or if I'm running one of these alternative languages um, on Tomcat. Mm -hmm. Can I use Tom EE to sort of adapt that to things like Absolutely. transactions? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so we don't remove any part of Tomcat. Okay. So your app that runs on Tomcat will run on Tommy. And that is like a core critical part of what we're trying to do. We, as I mentioned, we do not want to get in, your, in the way of your enjoyment of Tomcat. We just simply want to take the complexity of you having to cobble these things together out of your hands. Uh, you know, you mentioned that it does get difficult to, to tie these things together, and I can promise you, 
if it was so easy, we would have been certified seven, eight, 12 months ago. It's, uh, it's quite difficult to really take care of all the things that need to be taken care of and integrate everyone together. Because you can't, they don't just all integrate with one part, they gotta integrate with each other. And it's sort of like a you know, star mesh model that everyone's gotta be aware of everything going on. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it takes quite a, wh quite a while. Now, that makes it sound really heavy. It's not. Our download's about 23 meg. And uh, when we boot up, we're still, we can pass the entire web profile TCK without increasing the Java memory. How did you, how did you pass the TCK? You are, you are a project at Apache, right? Right, yeah. So, so how, how did you get a hold of the, of, of the test compatibility kit? I thought that the Apache guys left uh, the JCP. Yeah, they still are a licensee. So they left the JCP, um, but they are still a licensee. So they receive. Well, wait. wait a minute. Yeah. They left the JCP, but they're still a licensee. Right. So they're so they're still so they're so they're still participating with Oracle in the Java community. Uh, it, I Definitely. Mean, I mean, they, they could be participating more, and I would certainly hope that at some point we can find a way that Apache and the JCP can coexist and be innovative together again. Um, you know, Apache left for obviously licensing particular reasons, mm -hmm. and uh, which are very valid, and they weren't the only people who left uh, the JCP. Uh, however, despite the fact that Java itself may still have field of use restrictions, I think that there's a whole ecosystem still there that we could participate in that we should. There are a lot of open source specifications I should be careful because there are no open source specifications, but there are specifications that have open source implementations and open source reference, you know, TCKs, such as CDI, uh, and pretty much everything that Red Hat takes care of. Uh, JSR 330, which is the at inject specification, uh, that has an open source implementation and an open source TCK. I think those types of specifications fit with Apache's values and I personally, this is my personal perspective, feel that it's our duty to participate in those, to see that those specifications flourish and grow and encourage more specifications like them that have completely Apache licensed implementations and TCKs that people can get without restrictions. A TCK is something of an unwieldy beast from what I hear. Yeah. So it's just a huge, it's a huge blob of code that, that, that you have to run. Um, how did you pass the TCK? Right, well, uh, you know, it, it, it takes quite a long time to run this thing. And uh, so we came up with a solution, you know, that's quite modern. We, we use the cloud. So we have a pretty great setup uh, using EC2 where we take the TCK and its monolithicness and we split it up into uh, a few hundred chunks of tests. We throw that onto an active MQQ. We distribute that across, you know, say 100 T1 micro uh, spot instances. And uh, we just churn away on the TCK and get all the, the results back. Uh, the really cool part about this is that when we, you know, our certification is now on the Amazon EC2 T1 micro, uh, M1 small, and uh, C1 medium. Uh, EC2 instances, so that's actually our, our platform that we're registered as having passed the TCK on, so we're cloud certified. So that'd be really cool, and I think that... Uh, Who actually pays for that time on the EC2 cloud? Uh, I have. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and other people in the project. You know, we all sort mm -hmm. of chip in because it's something that we, that we believe in, you know. Um, and how long does it take in terms of instance hours to run the TCK? Um, instance hours, we can, on a, you know, on 100 instances, we can get through the TCK um, in about an hour and a half. That's like, what, 12 bucks? Even less. Okay. Uh, the T1 micro instances, spot requests, are about 0.002 cents. And so really costs us uh, you know, about two bucks. Cool, well, that, that's a cool story. So Tommy, uh, you can download it at where? Apache, at, uh, it's a part of the, you know, 
it's part of the Open EJB project, but we're going to try and rearrange it so people don't have to see EJB when they go to access Tommy. It's just that we are the ones who, who uh, were the central point that we're all, that everyone just sort of been, has been participating in, in creating Tommy. Uh, but yeah, it's, you can go to uh, openegb.apache.org uh, or just Google Apache Tommy and, uh, and you come to it directly and get a download. And I think it's going to be a really great new addition to the Java EU space, give some people some choices. And uh, I think we're trying to rede redefine enterprise as small, that for, for a long time enterprise sort of meant big and heavy. And uh, today's age with the cloud and, and the focus on testing and things like that, uh, you know, the real secret sauce to enterprise is small, a lot of small, hundreds of small. And there's a great value in Tommy in the cloud because you can pick the tiniest instances, machine types that are available, and we'll chew up very little of that. Like I said, we pass the entire TCK without increasing the Java memory, so it's the standard 64. And uh, T1 Micro has 613 megabytes of memory. Well, minus 64, the rest is yours. So if you chose an app server that takes a gig, then you'd have to go up to the next level up to get the same value you'd get off the smaller machine. So it's really kind of cool and interesting, I think. Great, sounds good. Thanks for joining us. All right, thanks for having me.